The Joint Central Committee has complied with a mandate adopted from a motion submitted by the Metropolitan Police Federation. This call for a ballot of all the members on the question of whether or not they wish to pursue full industrial rights once they have been provided with all of the relevant information. In the last few years, the phrase industrial rights has been used by members of the Police Federation as shorthand for the right to take industrial action. I want to explain the difference between police officers who are unable to take industrial action and the vast majority of workers in the UK who are able to take industrial action. Police officers uphold the law and are used to working through the law. Our paying conditions of service are also provided by the law. This is not the case for most workers. For them, employment law only provides basic safeguards, for example, a minimum wage or the right to paid holidays. Of course, many employees enjoy better terms and conditions than these, but they are not set out in legislation in the same way as they are for police officers. Workers who are trade union members tend to enjoy better pay and conditions than those who are not. But this is not directly due to the law, but because those conditions have been negotiated between the union and the employer. Just over a quarter of workers in the UK are members of trade unions. Employers only have to negotiate with trade unions in certain circumstances and often it is legally possible for employers to end any formal negotiating arrangements with a trade union. There are times when unions will have used industrial action as a bargaining tool in their negotiations with employers. And when we talk about industrial rights it should be understood there are no specific industrial rights set out in law and when workers take industrial action this is usually as a breach of their contract of employment. However, if the industrial action has been lawfully called by a trade union then workers who take industrial action are protected from dismissal but the employer can still dock their pay. For a strike to be lawful a union must hold a secret ballot of all the affected members with ballot papers sent to the members' homes or their workplace addresses. And if workers take industrial action without following this process, their action will be unlawful and their employer can dismiss them. It's against the law for police officers to join a trade union or to cause disaffection amongst police officers. This makes it illegal in effect for police officers to take industrial action. This is because police officers, not like other workers, they hold a unique status in that they are not employees, they hold the office of constable. Employees have contracts of employment, whilst police officers have conditions of service which are provided for in legislation. The Joint Central Committee has adopted a neutral position in this ballot and it is for you to decide if you think that we should seek the right for police officers to take industrial action. The decision is yours and it is my intention over the coming weeks and months to provide you with all the relevant information so that when you cast your vote, you do so from an informed position. Thank you.